I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be here to support this event uh, because, uh, as you heard from Jane's introduction, uh, I am the living embodiment of someone who has uh, made that transition from the private sector uh, into the public sector and have the privilege uh, in my current role of uh, being part of the team uh, at uh, both the Foreign Office and the Department for International Development. But I uh, know how important it is to work with business and so an event like this uh, with Business Fights Poverty uh, is incredibly important and your convening power here and uh, many thanks to both Barclays and to GSK for their sponsorship of this event. Uh, but the convening power of uh, Business Fights, Fights Poverty is something uh, that is really uh, important, really complementary to what the UK is trying to achieve. And uh, we all know that our ability to deliver the global goals rests so heavily on business. The jobs, the incomes, the economic growth that's needed uh, to make a difference to the world's poorest is going to come from a combination of uh, the public sector and the private sector. And we really must work together uh, to deliver that change. Uh, we know that uh, the World Bank has uh, estimated that if nothing changes, uh, n only a quarter of the 450 million new jobs that will be needed just in Africa alone uh, in the next 20 years will be created. And so it's great to see everyone here today really committed to being part of that change. Because uh, if we are serious about achieving these uh, sustainable development goals by 2030, we really do need to step up the level of investment, which is uh, currently a gap of $2.5 trillion a year, uh, of which only $1.4 trillion uh, is, unmet, is met by our, our existing financial flows. Now, uh, I'm often surprised to discover how few people know that uh, in terms of the UK's commitment to spend 0.7% uh, of its gross national income every year uh, in terms of development assistance, uh, that that commitment has been made in law. It is on the statute books of the United Kingdom. Uh, and we know that that's an important part of what is needed, but that uh, traditional development assistance cannot plug the financing gap, uh, especially at a time when around the world public finances are increasingly constrained. And in fact, we can see that the OECD uh, countries have actually reduced their overseas development assistance to Africa since 2015. Not the UK, but overall the OECD. And so that's why all of you in this room play such an important part in considering how your organisations and your actions can contribute to delivering those sustainable development goals. So I'll outline our, our vision as the UK government. It's a vision that's already happening, but it's one that really needs to be scaled up further. It's a vision where investment drives measurable impact and where business is responsible and where we consider both the quality and the quantity of jobs, and where the ingenuity of business and government leaders drives new innovation. The majority of firms in developing countries cite access to finance as a severe constraint on their business. I think as a world leading financial centre, uh, we see uh, an important role working alongside the City of London as uniquely placed to address these challenges. It's got the world's deepest and most liquid uh, pool of international capital. It's got a great breadth of in investors and it's got a great range of international investment opportunities. And the City of London can and should establish itself as the financial centre for the developing world. And the Department for International Development is working not only with our regulators, but also with the Bank of England to offer a range of different technical assistance to developing countries. The UK also wants to be the largest G7 investor in Africa. And uh, from our private sector development arm, CDC, we're providing up to £3.5 billion of additional capital to Africa and to South Asia over the next five years. Through its new strategy, CDC will support the creation of jobs and invest in higher risk sectors, helping to deliver those SDGs. However, to achieve real scale, greater flows are needed. 
from sources of private capital, from pension funds, from other institutional investors in the developing country markets. And so the UK stands ready to work with investors to develop innovative ways to achieve impact at scale. And we want to see those opportunities fed through to British savers. We think a new paradigm of investment is emerging. It goes way beyond the traditional environmental, social and, uh, uh, and government uh, governance goals with the explicit goal of delivering impact itself. Last year, impact investors held $228 billion worth of assets under management. That is double the amount reported the previous year. We know that investors are increasingly concerned about how the businesses they invest in operate and the sustainable development goal impact that they achieve. And so that's why our Department for International Development Impact Program is working to improve the global ecosystem for impact investment, including through supporting the Global Impact Investing Network. The UK is also supporting the World Benchmarking Alliance, which will address the problem by ranking companies on their performance against the SDGs. We'll celebrate good practice, we'll highlight where companies can do better. And the Development Secretary will be attending the launch event this evening alongside Aviva Chief Executive Mark Wilson. The UK Government is also uh, committed to promoting responsible business standards. We're working with a number of partners, including the UN Global Compact, the Global Reporting Initiative, Share Action, and B Lab. Our new business integrity initiative will help companies to operate responsibly in countries with high levels of, of corruption, tax evasion and human rights abuse. We need more innovation and more collaboration to really seize that momentum. We are working closely with the London <coughs> Stock Exchange to enable African firms and governments to raise money in London, including in their local currency. We know that developing countries are vulnerable to the fluctuations in currency exchange rates. This can drive up their cost of debt in foreign currencies. So we must do more to help improve access to local currency financing, to help countries and companies getting uh, to help countries and companies which are getting into difficulty over debt finance. And the private infrastructure de delivery group, another part of the Department for International Development, is delivering local currency guarantees to mobilise domestic resources. The UK is also supporting efforts to develop alternative financing mechanisms such as the development impact bonds. We're testing the use of £6.3 million worth of impact bonds for developing outcomes spanning income generation, disability and education. And I'm proud that we're launching a £10 million education development impact bond to improve education for 200,000 primary school children in India, working with partners like UBS Optimus Foundation, the Dell Foundation and British Asian Trust. We're working closely with other donors to develop a joint strategy for using impact bonds at greater scale, leveraging in private investment. So I look forward to spending this morning discussing with you the ways in which we can work alongside business to collaborate and to find out how else the UK government can help. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harriet.